Hello, this is Adelaide Eternal, and you're with Saab McClinton, bringing you more Australian Highlander deck discussion. If you're just starting out, these seven overviews of seven Highlander archetypes might help you decide on your new deck. And if you're an existing player, this video keeps you in the loop on the wide variety of powerful options in the diverse Australian Highlander metagame. If you're interested in one of these seven decks that we overview here, just comment below with the name of the deck, and we'll dedicate a full seven minute deck tech into it on an upcoming seven minute seven point series video. Now, let's continue with blue black delver so this is fundamentally a tempo deck and you're looking at the two most powerful openings of the deck being delver of secrets and death right shaman your one drops after that if you're able to protect one of them and get to victory that's great but you might have to follow up with something like tomb stalker or germag angler or true name nemesis any of these single threats is probably enough to win the game as long as you couple it with the counter spells to keep them protected and the removal spells to get their blockers out of the way. Dismember, Fatal Push, Go for the Throat, they all do the same job. Another interesting choice in the deck is Bitter Blossom. It's really robust and it's very effective at keeping you applying pressure to your opponent with a constant stream of fairies. The next deck we'll look at is Rug Ramp. So this is often referred to as Scape Shift, but there are other versions that use additional colors, such as a four color version or five color version using Bring to Light. But most of the time, when we're looking at the normal Rug version, we're looking at not really a combo. We're trying to ramp into something big. So you can ramp into Titania, Thrag Tusk, Primeval Titan, Avenger of Zendikar, Inferno Titan, or even one of the big biggest threats possible Maelstrom Wanderer letting you cascade. It's a nightmare for control decks to deal with. Then sometimes you just manage to pull off the scapeshift victory, sacrificing enough lands to trigger your Valakut Molten Pinnacle to deal enough damage to the face. The next deck we'll look at is the Malira Pod deck. So this is essentially a mid-range deck and you're looking at grinding out value through your creatures sometimes and other times comboing out with Malira or Anafenza Kintry Spirit to essentially go infinite with Kitchen Finks or Murderous Red Cap, giving you infinite life or infinite damage with a sacrifice outlet. It also has an additional combo in the deck, which is Archangel of Thune and Spike Feeder. But at the end of the day, you can play two roles and that's the strength of the deck, either mid-range or combo. You can use Court of Calling and Green Sun Zenith and Birthing Pod to find the creatures that you need at the right time, and some versions of the deck even use Survival of the Fittest. Black Red Aggro is a very fast deck. It uses Mox Jet and Mox Ruby to power out your threats turn 1 and turn 2 as quickly as possible, and the deck has a critical mass of 1 drops. Blood Soak Champion, Carnophage, Deathrite Shaman, Diagraph Ghoul, Goblin Guide, Grave Crawler, Grim Lava Mance, Arachdos Cacalus, Dromkirk Noble, Vampire Lacerator, the list just keeps going on. So if you can deploy as many small guys as possible and beat face as quickly as possible, reduce their life total, you can burn them out with Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Fire Bolt, uh, Reckless Abandon, any of these great burn spells. If that plan doesn't work, you've always got the backup plan of Skull Clamp. Clamp your dudes, find more burn, and finish them off with the last few points of damage. The next deck we'll look at is Blue-White Control. So this is a very traditional archetype in Magic. If you go back to the deck and you think of how powerful it was to cast a Wrath of God and Swords to Plowshares to keep your opponent down and a counter spell to stop them getting back in the game, you're doing exactly the same thing here, just in Highlander. The difference is you get to play all the iconic Blue Powerhouse Control cards of the modern era as well, including Cryptic Command, Mystic Confluence, Jace the Mind Sculptor and so on, but you've also got these great Great new ways to interact like lingering souls to provide either chump blockers or four power in the air. You've got back to basics to lock your opponent out of the game. You've got Dragon Lord Orgitai to just finish the game real quick. And you've even got an Unburial Rites package where you can return an Elish Norn as quickly as turn 4 or 5. Some even use Caracas as well with a Legend sub theme where you can return Vendillion Click and Venza Shape of Savant just to name a few. Another deck is Talarian Draw 7s. So this deck revolves around its three Draw 7s, Time Twister, Memory Jar, and Time Spiral, and reusing these continually to generate as much advantage as possible. Oftentimes you're casting these multiple times all on the same turn, generating additional mana every time you do, because you've got Talarian Academy. Talarian Academy is so broken in this deck when you can cast a whole bunch of artifacts to allow your Academy tapping to 
three, four, progressively more and more mana, and then untapping it. Deserted Temple and Petrified Field play a very important role here in ensuring that you always have your Talarian Academy. And Glacial Chasm is another land that is very integral, ensuring that you don't get beaten down and buying you that extra little bit of time. You can win via Tezzeret the Seeker, you can also win via Ugin, exiling your opponent's board, but Cunning Wish is the key point. Using Cunning Wish to fetch either capsize from your sideboard to capsize all of their permanents back to their hand, and even Blue Sun Zenith, targeting yourself, or then later on when you're ready to win, targeting your opponent for X is 45, 50, 60, whatever number you need to mill them out. The last deck we'll talk about today is Dark Bant. Dark Bant is the best of everything. It has the best creatures, Leovold Emissary of Tress, True Name Nemesis, Vendillion Click, Restoration Angel, Siege Rhino, Titania. They're the best creatures in the, those four colours, everything but red. You've also got Birthing Pod to find those amazing creatures. You've got Mana Dorks to ramp those amazing creatures out. You also have the best removal in the game. You've got Swords to Plowshares, Abrupt Decay, Council's Judgment. You've also got the best interaction on the stack. Counterspell, Days, Evasive Action, Miscalculation. And you've also got one of the best card advantage engines, Skull Clamp, where you can clamp your dudes and keep drawing. Dark Bant fundamentally uses the best cards in the format, and if that's what you want to be doing, this is the deck for you. If you're interested in one of these seven decks that we overviewed here, just comment below with the name of the deck, and we'll dedicate a full seven minute deck tech into it in one of the upcoming seven minute seven point series videos. Thank you all for watching.